Today's video, it's all about how a professional foundryman uses air vents in his sand moulds. And he's written an article, and that's the title, Permeability and the Value of Artificial Venting in Green Sand Moulds. It's by J.L. May. And I highly recommend if you can get a copy of this article to read it all the way through. So I'll give you some more information about the title of the magazine, when it was published, and who the publishers are. These are the details, that is the magazine title, that is the publisher, and that is the date when it was printed, October 1968. Oh, that was a long time ago. Under the title of the article, there is a brief description of what the article is all about. Now, what I'd like to show you, the very last sentence is a very interesting one. And I'll read it out. Finally, the factors affecting the decision whether or not to use artificial venting as an integral stage in the moulding process are summarised. So, it says whether or not. Now, to some people that might sound heresy not to use air vents, but if you read that very carefully, it is not necessary to use air vents all the time. So, here are the reasons why he says sometimes you may need to put air vents in a sand mould. So we've got defects in the casting due to blowholes, mist runs, mould surface damage and defects such as flutter. Well, flutter I'm not sure about, but I think it's when the metal enters the mould and it jumps up and down. It's bound to give a horrible surface to the casting. But it's interesting to note where he says misruns here. Now, he only mentions that twice in the article and he gives a very brief account of it. But what the major part of the article is about is mole surface damage. And that's what he focuses on. Yeah, it's very interesting in that paragraph. It gives you four reasons why he puts air vents on a sand mold. But if you look on the videos, you'll see most people would have put an air vent to prevent a misrun. But that's very interesting also because you watch people, they've put the air vent in and they still don't prevent the misruns in the mould. There's obviously other reasons why that mould will not fill up. In the magazine article, there are some drawings of some moulds. And this is the heading for that drawing. It says, illustration of casting contours which become progressively less free venting. So with those drawings, I won't need to show them to you. So what I'll do, I'll show you a real world example. Now this is the first example they had there. That's the parting line there with the ruler. So what happens is, this is a very simple casting and the path for the steam to escape from the casting cavity to the atmosphere is classified as very simple and free venting. So what happens is, this has got a flat surface here, so all through here the steam goes through the mould like that, raises up like that. And then you've got the sides, same thing, the steam comes out and it probably eventually goes up to your parting line. And the same with underneath, because there's a flat surface, the steam goes down like that, and the same with that side there. So this one is a very free venting mould, and what happens is most people who cast stuff, even I am the same, most of the stuff you'll cast is that shape, and is classified as free venting. Okay, now we come to the second lot of drawings that were in the book, or in the magazine article, these become less free venting. Now I'll show you. There's the ruler and the parting line. Now this is where things get a bit more complicated. When the steam escapes, it still hasn't got a path or it goes straight out and nothing is stopping it from coming out. But what the problem is, is when you come to this part here, the steam comes out here and the steam comes out here. And they sort of interfere with each other. And the same all the way around, you've got 
steam coming out, other parts of that green sand core, and they all interfere with each other. So it becomes less free venting. Now what happens also, that was the second one. Now they show you a real good example. It's very similar to this, so you can imagine if you've got this part here and extends way down to here, and same with this part here, it extends way down to there, you've got a big lump of sand in there. So what happens is, there's the steams coming out that way, the steam is going that way, and it becomes extremely difficult to vent. And this is where possibly you could have to use a vent wire in the sand to make it breathe easier. So here we've got an interesting table and what it does, it gives you the amount of vents you'll see there compared to no vents and there's the X factor, the distance, I'll explain that in a minute and how many seconds it takes to pass two litres of air through that sand sample. The one thing that you are missing on that table is that X factor and what it is this is a rammed tube, it's just full of sand, been rammed and what they've done, X is that distance there so it starts from there and they have the air vents coming in at different depths to get as close as possible and zero means no vents and also they do a number of vents so you'll see a one in that table, there's one vent and then it says two, there's two vents, and then there is three. So that should be clear enough for you to follow on that table. So here we are with another interesting title where it says disadvantages of artificial venting. So everyone's thinking how can that be? Well there's one particular one they'll mention here and I'll go through it in a minute, but foundry vents are the most misunderstood and misused foundry method ever. People just don't understand what they're for and they misuse them. And here is an example. If the vents break through into the bowl cavity, metal will enter them during casting and render them useless. Now repeat that again. Useless. How can an air vent be useless? Well there it says it very clearly. Now I must say that I do not use air vents ever, yet I produce some very good castings and rarely have any failures. So in another part of this paragraph, we see here, it, in addition, the resulting needles of iron which enter the moulding sand at knockout are a potential danger both to the hands of the moulders and to the sand handling plants and equipment. And I can tell you it does hurt because I've had one go underneath my fingernail and it hurts like hell. Here is another interesting point. If however the vents in the bottom portion of the mould are not open to the atmosphere via vents in a sand bed, holes in a perforated pallet or plate or grooves in a concrete floor, then the benefits to be obtained are nullified. That's what you see a lot in the videos, people put plates and wooden um, sheets in there and clamp them down or use weights and they cover them up. So that's a point you've got to watch. Here are two more points. The venting it says only be effective if the vent wires take as nearing as practical to the bowl face and a sufficient number of such vents are formed. Now the reason why you should not push the vent wire into the mould cavity is because when you do that you weaken the sand and what happens is the sand tends to break off and it'll fall into your mould and you'll have a dirty casting. Now he puts that point again, free access to the atmosphere for the vents must be provided otherwise the whole purpose of providing artificial vents to conduct gases and steam away from the region of the mould cavity is defeated. So it's very clear on that and this is why I watch a lot of people on videos where they will put a vent and then they'll put their finger on top and repack the sand down again and close off the vent. So what I'll do, I'll give you a real world example again where I'll make up a mould and I'll show you 
the right way and the wrong way of making vents in a sand mould. In the magazine article they've shown some extensive drawings about how not to use vents. I thought it might be better off to show you a real world example. So here is a sample mould. So what we've got, that's the drag and that's the cope. This is the wrong way to use vents and you'll see them so much in videos. So what they'll do, see they'll put a scratch vent across here, a scratch vent across here and one across there. And also what they'll do, they'll poke the vent wire from here then they'll go like that and if they're lucky they might put three vents in there. Now, you see how in the article he mentioned when they fill up, when this mould fills up it'll block that off, block that vent off and block that vent off. And also what will happen is those three vents they will block off as well. So what's the point of putting them in there? You really should put these vents from this side inwards. We'll have a closer look at these vent holes here. Now you can see they're starting to break away. I mean you can put your fingers in there and start patting them a bit but they are always a good place for the sand to break off and what it'll do it'll fall into the bottom of the cavity and you'll get a dirty casting. This is another mistake I see people make in the videos. You can see where it's broken through there. There's your three air vents. So what happens? You've got your sprue here. So I say, right, we'll put a mould weight on top of here. So what does that do? It blocks off those three air vents. So someone's going to watch this video with critical thinking skills and say, how come you haven't vented the drag part of the mould? Well, what happens? All the videos you'll see, no one ever puts vents in here. And guess what? That part of the mould there with the metal contacts, when they machine it, it is usually free of defects. So you sort of got to wonder, maybe they don't need to vent it. But, what they've said in the magazine article, you do really need to go and put air vents in here, but you've got to put them into a certain distance there so they don't break through, because quite obviously it's going to leak. Now the other problem is, if you put the mould on a wooden plate like that, it's going to block off all those vents. So really, they're useless. If you put the vents in there, they're going to be blocked off. So you can see how I did that. You have to really measure carefully how far you go in, otherwise you'll break into that mould. So, this is what people do. They will put vents in the coat part of the mould, but not in the drag. But if you do put them in the drag, you've got to put them in so far, so they're around here and enough, and what he recommends is every 25 millimetres you've got to put an air vent in to make sure that it works. Just have a quick look at these set of figures. They concern the next three photographs we're going to have a look at. See the moisture percentage, 7% and then 8.8%. Now that's a lot of moisture. My sand I only use 4%. And when I get up to 5% I get very nervous because I know it's going to cause blowholes and other problems. So, here are the moulds. Remember those figures from the last clip? Well, here they are. Now, this is a side-by-side -side method. You pour two castings exactly the same. One has a vent and one doesn't have a vent. And you can see if there's any difference in the mould and you'll see with here that says the left hand one has been vented and that one hasn't been vented. So there's no difference whatsoever in the sand. But then we'll move on to the next photograph and you'll see quite a bit of difference. So this photograph is so much different from the first one. So what's the difference? The first one was rammed in the correct way 
and this one here both these ones were rammed like they're trying to make a foundation for a 10 story building I mean they rammed it really hard that this one here and the previous one had the same moisture content but we'll have a look and see what happens here left hand that one there is not vented and the right hand one has been vented so it makes a huge amount of difference so if all these people here that make castings there if you over ram them do you get these large defects called scabs on the surface of your casting if not well you may not have to vent your moulds so this is the last photograph and as you'll see both castings were badly uh, scabbed which is surface defects and we'll have a look the left hand one was vented and the right hand was not vented so why was the venting not effective well this one here there was two percent more moisture added and when you add too much moisture in a sand no amount of venting will fix the problem and it was also rammed so hard like I said you can make a foundation for a 10 story building and when you ram them too hard plus you put too much moisture in it well you're wasting your time with your venting and you're going to have to start over again it just does not work to finish up the article we're in the very last paragraph of the article and we'll read this out although in hand moulding processes it is essential to use artificial venting in some cases so he says some cases but also you read a bit further down here efficient process control for sand quality and mould production usually enables the need for artificial venting to be avoided so what they're saying is control your water content and how hard you ram a mould and generally that will solve a lot of problems without even using a vent but in some cases you may have to use a vent